Hello everyone, my name is Sarush Zaghi and I'm here with my myofunctional therapist and partner Sanda Valku Pinkerton and we're quite honored to be uh, speaking to you guys uh, from Los Angeles about myofunctional therapy. And before we start, I really want to help uh, thank the uh, organizers of the Sleep and Dreams meeting of CAFE, especially uh, Dr. Yu Chin Li, Dr. Ann Ho, and a big thank you to Dr. Stanley Liu for uh, inviting us here to present this information to you. Uh, so Sanda and I are uh, uh, working out of Los Angeles in a group called the Breathe Institute. And here we not only address the structural issues that affect patients with uh, sleep issues, but also the functional and behavioral issues. And the purpose of this short talk is to introduce to you guys uh, what are some of the functional issues that may affect kids and adults with breathing issues and what we do in our practice to help, uh, to help them along. So as you know, uh, obstructive sleep apnea is a process in which the patients have a partial or complete block blockage of their airway. Uh, these blockages can be caused either by structure or by function. So by structure, we have things like nasal obstruction due to septal deviations or turbinate hypertrophy, uh, blockages in the oropharynx at the level of the tonsils, uh, or even uh, problems with the maxillofacial skeleton as with uh, retrognathic or microgenia uh, jaw. But also these problems can uh, present in terms of core function. And what we're gonna look at specifically today is a low tone tongue. So what do we mean by low tone? Let's take a look in this example. Lift up your tongue. Open your mouth wide. Stick out your tongue. So you can see in this example how weak her tongue is. She can barely uh, lift up her tongue and has a lot of compensation just to do that. And uh, I'm really fortunate to work with Sanda because she's a second set of eyes. So Sanda, why don't you tell us what you're seeing in this example? Definitely what I see here, it is a uh, low tone tongue, like you already mentioned. And the way I'm looking at it is that you ask the patient to protrude her tongue, but she was able just to actually protrude the tip of the tongue. And as you notice, the tip is being lifted. Uh, and the back of the tongue, like two thirds of the posterior part of the tongue, they are just, it's low tone, not moving. And also you can see a weak chin the chin and the lips are trying actually to help the tongue to come forward. Excellent. So this is an example of a functional problem that can cause, uh, for example, tongue base obstruction in this case. So, uh, Sana, tell us, what is myofunctional therapy? Well, myofunctional therapy, it's a, a set of exercises, but not only that, actually, because we work, uh, with the, obviously, with the tongue tone to increase the strength of the muscles in the tongue uh, and um, the face. But as well, we uh, are uh, guiding the patients in proper swallow and breathing. So there's actually a meta-analysis that we performed out of the Stanford group in which we looked uh, through the literature and identified that myofunctional therapy can actually help improve the apnea hypopnea index by 50% in adults and 62% in children. And uh, Sana, why don't you tell us about your perspective on this study? My perspective was uh, I was unbelievable excited about this uh, research paper uh, because actually was putting myofunctional therapy on the map as an adjunct to uh, treating sleep disorders. Yep. So Sanda, tell us about some of the therapy goals and objectives. Well, it promotes exclusive nasal breathing, strengthen and tone the muscle of tongue and orofa uh, orofacial oro complex, promote ideal oral resting posture, meaning lips together, tongue on the roof of the mouth, yes. and nasal breathing, identify compensations of the jaw and neck during chewing, talking, and swallowing and also makes patients being aware and uh, eliminating parafunctional habits as tongue sucking, nail biting, hair chewing, and so on. And so here's an example of one of the patients that Sandy and I shared. This is a 23-year-old gentleman with uh, sleep apnea, uh, as well as tightness in his neck, head, and shoulders. He had trouble falling asleep, uh, really couldn't sleep on the back, and much, much preferred to sleep on his side. Uh, he had PMJ pain, clicking, and dysfunction, recurrent sinus infections, 
along with anxiety and depression due to these issues with chronic fatigue. And uh, so while Sanda was working with this patient, he, she actually asked for a baby picture. And why don't you tell us what you're seeing in this picture, Sanda? Well, yeah, in one of my sessions talking with uh, Trevor, actually, I asked him, I said, do you have any pictures about uh, when, when you were a child, as a child? And definitely he talked with his mother. And here, as you can see, you see the baby having really a severe tongue tie. That's right. And the, and the truth is, is that these issues are oftentimes present in young children. And if we can treat them early, we can uh, often present a lifetime of issues with uh, snoring, sleep apnea, and jaw dysfunction. Let's hear a little bit from Trevor himself. I had had um, a number of problems throughout my life, which I had um, tried to address with braces, with getting my tonsils removed, with all sorts of uh, treatments. And finally, I went to a dentist uh, in Los Angeles, almost ready to do another round of braces, and he referred me here to, to Dr. Zaghi. Um, and I did six weeks of myofunctional therapy, um, and a tongue tie release, and then six more weeks, which you know is still continuing. Um, but already I can tell that I can breathe so much easier. My neck, before my neck was tensing up. Um, I mean, to the point where I could see the tendons, which other people could see the tendons popping out of my neck. Um, and that's, you know, completely gone, basically. Um, I can speak a lot easier, I feel like. I just am more relaxed in general. So, yeah, I would highly recommend uh, to anyone who is uh, having trouble diagnosing exactly what is wrong with them, trying uh, and seeing if this is maybe the answer. And so that kind of underscores uh, the importance of identifying uh, these issues early because uh, tongue tie issues may present in infants with swallow and speech issues, but if it goes undiagnosed, our recent studies actually show that it can lead to underdevelopment of the maxillofacial skeleton uh, as a risk factor for, for uh, nasal breathing limitations, sinus issues, and then later on causing um, uh, functional and structural issues that affect the airway, leading to snoring, teeth grinding, and eventually uh, sleep apnea. Sandra, go ahead and tell us how we can identify some signs of oral myofascial disorders. There are intraoral and extraoral signs that we can look uh, for. Intraoral will be scallop tongue, linea alba, diastema, tongue thrust, dori, open bite, cross bite present, narrow palate, recession, and also up fractions and wear facets from bruxism. Extraoral signs will be forward head posture, forward shoulder posture, gait, pigeon toe walk, mouth breathing, lip competency. And uh, we actually published a, a study to, to assess for tongue tie. And uh, this is based on the work of uh, Audrey Yoon, as well as Stanley Liu, myself, and Christian Gamino, in which we evaluate uh, for tongue tie based on uh, the percentage of tongue mobility as a comparison to mouth opening. So in this example, you see in A, uh, the patient is asked to open their mouth uh, all the way, and he, they're opening, their maximal of mouth opening is 48 millimeters. Then we ask them to put their tongue to the tip of the incisive papilla, and in this example, it's 34. And you take a ratio of that, and the ratio of 34 to 48 gives you a measurement of about 70%. And then so we say that their tongue mobility is 70% or grade two functioning. In general, we consider less than 50% tongue mobility to be um, abnormal and a greater than 50% to be in the normal range. So if they're less than 50% functioning, this would be a criteria for functional uh, ankyloglossia. And a lot of times patients with these uh, functional issues, they can uh, compensate and strain for the functional limitations. Since they're not able to lift up their tongue with the intrinsic tongue muscles, they have a forward head posture and are really straining uh, with their neck and jaw. And that can oftentimes contribute to the, the pain that they experience. And so how do we identify the compensations? Here's an example showing just that. So here we are, uh, we're gonna demonstrate in, in our lovely patient a uh, grade four compensating to grade uh, two tongue tie. So first of all, open up and lift up your mouth, lift up your tongue. So she's able to lift up all the way. 
but she's pulling up her floor of mouth and she's straining a lot with her neck. You can see all this tension in her neck just to lift up the tongue. This is because the tongue, relax now, is physically tethered to the floor of the mouth and she's not able to lift up her tongue mm -mm. with the intrinsic tongue muscles. So she has to use all these muscles in her neck and in her jaws and this is contributing to her chronic uh, jaw pains in this example. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing with us. Thank you. Okay, Susanna, why don't you walk us through some visible signs of these issues? Yes, tongue tie, uh, labial tie, mouth breathing during the day and night, tongue thrust, tonsils ad in adenoids, oral habits like nail biting, TMD clenching and grinding, and, uh, and so if they have some of these issues, we can get them into therapy. And here's an example of what the therapy looks like. Myofunctional exercise for post phrenectomy, tongue tie release surgery. Let's practice a tongue exercise that will help with your tongue tie recovery and establish a proper posture and function. Level one exercise. First week after surgery, immediate post-op healing and range of motion. Snake exercise. Make a point with your tongue. Extend the pointed tongue out of your mouth and pull it back in. Make sure the tip of your tongue does not touch the lips. Repeat 25 times. Waggle flap. Place the tip of your tongue on your upper and lower lips. Move the tip of your tongue up and down. Repeat 10 times. Waggle spot. Move the tip of your tongue from side to side, left, right, and spot. Touch the spot with the tip of your tongue. Continue to waggle the tongue and return it to the spot. Repeat 10 times. Jawbreaker. With lips closed, point the tongue into your left cheek. It should look like a jawbreaker in the side of your cheek. Hold for 10 seconds. Now move it to the right. Hold for 10 seconds. All right, so that gives you a little sense of what myofunctional therapy is all about. So uh, in closing, uh, myofunctional therapy can really help with uh, speech, uh, swallow, as well as sleep apnea issues, but it can also help with the orthodontic occlusion. And so here's an example of a lady who came to us with snoring, teeth grinding, jaw pain, and dental malocclusion. And after only three weeks of myofunctional therapy, she was significantly improved in a lot of these respects without needing an NTI device or an orthotic. And you can see these pictures of her dental occlusion already improving with only three weeks of the myofunctional therapy. So we want to really thank you guys all for the opportunity to present with you and share a little, a little video with you showing uh, how powerful the tongue can really be. So that gives you a sense of uh, what you can do with proper functioning of the tongue. We uh, thank you so much uh, and uh, hope you have a wonderful rest of your conference. Take care. Bye.